Being able to tell at a glance that a number is a multiple of 2, 3 or 5 is a useful skill. We will focus on one application in this video. We have to be able to identify prime numbers. A prime number has no factors except one and itself. If we are able to prove that a number has another factor, then we know that this number is actually a composite number. In this video, I will show a shortcut to determine if a number is a multiple of 3. I will also show what multiples of 2 have in common and what multiples of 5 have in common. I will also discuss why it is not important to use multiples of 4 and other composite numbers in this exercise. All multiples of 2 end in either 2, 4, 6, 8 or 0. Thus, any counting number ending in 2, 4, 6, 8 or 0 is a composite number. The rule says, if a number is a multiple of 3, the sum of the individual digits in the number is also a multiple of 3. Let me show you what that means using three examples, 129, 372 and 579. 129. The sum of the individual digits, the sum of 1, 2 and 9. 1 plus 2 plus 9 is equal to 12. 12 is a multiple of 3, so we conclude that 129 is also a multiple of 3. 372. 3 plus 7 plus 2 is equal to 12. 372 is a multiple of 3. 579 is also a multiple of 3 because the sum of the individual digits is 21. And we know that 21 is a multiple of 3. Thus, 129, 372 and 579 are all composite numbers. All multiples of 5 end in either 5 or 0. Mr. Dubey, what about 4? I noticed that you didn't use 4. If you are thinking this, good question. 4 is a composite number. Its factors are 1, 2 and 4. It follows that any number that is a multiple of 4 and 6 and all the others is also a multiple of 2. So if we can cross out all the multiples of 2, we are taking care of all the multiples of 4 and 6 and 8 etc as well. That's why I use prime numbers for efficiency. That's it. I am Mr. Dubey. See you in the next video.